November Black is an upcoming Halo ODST fan film, and recently I had the opportunity to sit down with the director of this fan film and talk to him about what's happening in this fan film and how the process has been for them. So all the links in the description and the pinned comments relate directly to the fan film. I highly encourage you give this fan film a chance when it comes out and enjoy the interview. So the first question is going to be, do you want to, uh, well, I guess this is more of an intro for you as well. Yeah, Would yeah. you like to tell us who you are and what exactly November Black is? Uh, I'm Joshua Walls. I am the director and cinematographer behind November Black. November Black is a short film based off of Halo ODST. You won me at the Halo and ODST part right there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how has your experience been with creating this fan film? Is this the first fan film you've done or have you done other things in the past? This is actually the first fan film. Um, our Almost our entire crew, we've had one other guy uh, one of our prop makers, he's worked on a, a short film and he's done a, a little bit of work for Neil Blomkamp as well. Oh, yeah. 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 So, it's a shame we never got his Halo movie instead. We got it, that. It is. And I, I loved the live action stuff that uh, he put out. It was a huge inspiration to us. Oh, well, that leads into my next question. Actually, is there any uh, inspiration behind what you're doing? So I guess it's from Neil. Yeah, I mean, the all of the Halo live action stuff, the We Are ODST, I mean, uh, as a young man, so I, I'm 32, so, you know, it was like 13 or 14 when Halo 2 came out. Um, I played Halo CE. All, I was a huge Halo fan, and I just feel like the universe hasn't really been expanded upon. Like, they kind of touched on it um in the halo tv show but i'd say like everybody in our group are huge like lore nerds uh and we really wanted to expand on that but like the we are odst trailer huge inspiration things like alien mm. basically anything sci-fi military with a little bit of horror um we've taken a lot of direction from that even even a little bit of like blade Runner and stuff so I'd say as far as inspiration, definitely the live action, the live action Halo stuff, uh, Neil stuff and the We Are ODST just. Yeah, well, I don't know about you, but I personally felt that the Halo show was pretty bad and kind of robbed us of what we should have been able to get. And what has like to me, like the hate, like you said, the Halo universe is really expansive and there's yeah. so many things to do. And the fact that's what they chose to do, just I, I, I don't understand their thought process. But one thing that I did notice from that was after that show was done, all of a sudden there was like three or four fan films popped up saying, hey, this is happening. And ironically, they I think like all of them are ODST ones as well. Again, there was no ODSTs in that show, so I don't know what was going on over there. Is, is, is your timing with this coincidental or were you like some other people that looked at the Halo show and said, I can do better? I think, I think it's a little bit 50, 50. There's certainly a part where I watched the Halo show and there was a couple of things I liked, but yeah, for the most part, um, I, I just felt like they didn't really, and, I, and I feel this way about a lot of adaptations. They want to create their own thing versus staying true to the current fan base, um, you know, and that, I don't want to, I don't want to get into it too much, but yeah, there was definitely a lot of disappointments and I actually was, so I, my journey into cinematography, I'm actually a firefighter mm -hmm. and I was in the army for about seven years. And one day I grabbed, I grabbed a, uh, a camera and started taking pictures of Halo toys. And believe, you know, funny thing is, is, it was actually about five little ODST figures. Mm -hmm. And I got into cosplay and I messaged on a cosplay forum on Facebook. And I was like, hey, I'd like to take some pictures of cosplayers. I want to move away from figures. I want to I want to go to people. And at the time I was doing some landscapes and some like high school portraits and stuff, stuff that I, I don't it's not fun, but it, it's some money, you know. And I met this guy. Larry Hastings, who's uh, Vulture Productions, he had a really good Halo ODST cosplay. It was like 
10 degrees and snowing and we are running around in uh, basically Kentucky, just south of Cincinnati. And I took a bunch of pictures of him. I was like, man, we should do, we should do our own TV show on the ODSTs. Let me uh, silence my phone real quick. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's a great idea. And I wasn't even expecting him to really say that, you know, like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And about three months later, we were talking in a group of cosplayers, some prop makers, him and uh, Offer 3D, and uh, just a bunch of Halo fans that we had a group chat with. And we're like, let's just do this. Let's make this film. And we haven't looked back. And that was probably nine months ago, maybe 10. So this is my short, first short film. Like I said, Larry Hastings has worked on a, a short based on cyberpunk. Oh. Yeah, no, it's 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 a real short short, but it's really cool, and the, the costume he does is wild. Um, we are bringing on somebody with about ten years, thirteen years of experience as well, a cinematographer. Um, but yeah, to circle back around, it was fifty fifty. There was a part that was like, hey, I think we could do a better job with the lore. We could do a better job, you know really making a film that was for fans and not not for a gross group of people you know we're not trying to i i someone watches our short film and they don't know halo and they don't like it i you know it is what it is but I, i'm making this for the fans we are making this for the fans and for us because we are fans we love halo and we were also kind of disappointed in the lack of content and and explanations and lore and stuff within the tv shows and some of the stuff that's been out recently i love that so making it for fans as well is a very important part because i i, I said this again i don't really want to talk about that show too much either yeah yeah <laughs> but to me the one of the best things that could have happened is if i was to talk to some of my friends that don't really know halo you know they just play the video games here and there for a bit of fun one of the best things they could have said is if they said i don't get it because i want them I want the show to appeal to people like me and people like you that do get it. You know what I mean? And yeah. I feel like just failed completely on that part. So like, I, I'm very excited for this, but you mentioned cosplay and I can't help but notice you got a few props there. So do you want to talk us through the process of creating um, the costumes? Because in the trailer, you know, one of the first things that noticed is everyone was looking at it going, damn, that, that actually looks like an ODST. Yeah, there's, you know, when I take photos of these guys, people think they're renders all the time. Hmm. And I have to tell them, like, this is live. Like, I took this photo. I, I only edited a little bit on Lightroom to, like, change the colors. It's not a hmm. render. Um, so, Offer 3D, Vulture Productions, Larry and Daryl, they are just masters of their craft. And when we started doing this, really quickly, we realized that the one, our, our, TV show is going to take place before Reach. Um, it's it's going to be in the times of insurrectionists and okay. UNSC going at it. So we were like, we have to do everything with, there has to be Reach, uh, the era of Reach, maybe some CE stuff here and there. So we're like, we have to rebuild these. These current suits that we had that were cosplay suits aren't going to work. So they just started going at it. And in about six months, they had created polyurethane casts and molds and popped out two suits uh, that you saw in the suit reveal trailer. Yep. They now have four. So once they got that first one done, um, it really made their job easier because they could push these out faster. And the cool thing about it being polyurethane is it's stuntable. I mean, I could literally smash the head of one of these helmets um, and it, it, nothing would happen to it. So we've got, here's one of the chest plates. Yeah. So you can see here, these shoulders, they, they look, especially with appropriate lighting, they look metal, um, yep. but you, can, huh. you can't yep. do this with 3D prints. See that? That's so cool. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so it's comfortable as well. Yes, and if you fall on it, it's not going to break. Um, that's badass. It, it really, it really changed the game and what we can do. And then the painting, the painting that off earth does, he can make, he can make almost any material look like it's metallic. Uh, his painting is, is really good. And then, uh, Larry, his big touch 
he likes to add the little things to stuff to really make it shine. So like the bullet here, we've got the battery pack for the um, goggles. And the cool thing about these goggles, I don't have the battery for it right now, but they light up and everything. There's lights inside the visors. Um, so it's, and then the dirt, the dirt and grime just really kind of sets it apart. You know, a lot of people, and this isn't, you know, I'm not down talking to anybody, but as far as cosplayers goes, you put all this time and energy into uh, a suit. You don't want to throw dirt on it, but the dirt and little grime and details and even the wear that they get, because we wear these to cons to help mm -hmm. promote the film. They wear them for eight, 10 hours, 12 hours, and they get some scratches here and there on them and we leave it there because it, it, that's a realistic place that there would be some wear and tear. Um, is that a DMR or a battle rifle? This DMR. is a DMR from Reach. Yep. It's not oh, it totally just complete. like it. It's totally it's not totally complete yet. We still gotta clean some stuff up. But essentially one of our team members, so we our ODSTs all have roles and yep. kind of kind of like Halo ODST. So our marksman, who's also a sniper, but for our film, she's running a DMR with a sniper scope. Mm -hmm. And this is your reach DMR. You can tell by the top and the grip here is, is different than the Halo 4 one. Yep. So, uh, this is also made out of polyurethane, oh, so yeah. it can get thrown around and getting beat up. The only, I would say, the only negative side to the polyurethane is sometimes things like this are a little loose, and you got to build a skeleton for it. Versus if mm -hmm. you 3D print it, it's already solid. And we've got some 3D printed props too, but for our heroes, we wanted to be able to throw them around and beat them up because. They're going to act and stunt, and we don't want to be out in the middle of the woods somewhere, you know, filming, and, oh, there goes one of our props. It's broken, and we only have so many of them. So the polyurethane just – it really changed the game for us. I love it. They've so, also done yeah. a lot of um, their own work, too. So, like I said, we're trying to stick to reach, but – these guys are so talented. He built this grenade launcher. Uh, he he literally, so this is uh, Larry, Vulture Productions. He literally handmade this backpack by looking at pictures of Reach Marines. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so sticking to the lore and the accuracies of the time is really important to us. But we are throwing in our own flair here and there. Yeah, of course. You know, you got to put your own little mark on it. But... <laughs> Even yeah. just that, like, attention to detail, like, you look at, like, a piece of armor and you can tell, you go, like, is this pre-reach, like, for example? Is this post-Covenant War? You know, stuff like that. You know, like, obviously, Master Chief looks different, post-Covenant War, that type of stuff. Yeah. So, keeping to those details, I think, is very important. So, big props for doing that. But, look, I'm a diehard ODST fanboy. Halo 3 ODST was the very first game I went to a midnight launch for. Yeah. I was... I was in early high school at the time, all right? It got to about midnight. I walked out the door to go get the game. My dad's like, what are you doing? It's a school night. And I told him, he's like, fine, I'll drive you there. So diehard ODST fanboy. So I have to ask, what made you want to do this as an ODST film? Well, I think I think it's a couple of things. One, I loved ODST. I, I think it was the perfect... I actually wish that Halo went in that direction, even if it was a spinoff that they kept working on, I think Halo ODST, it's more of a human story with all of the Marvel movies and super powered guys out right now. It's, I think I just got tired. The Spartans are kind of just in a way they're sort of, they're sort of like that super powered soldier, that superhero, uh, which is great, but that wasn't necessarily a story we wanted to tell. We wanted to tell a more human story. Um, I, I don't want to do a shot where a guy's getting shot by 500 people. We want one of our inspirations. I didn't talk about it earlier was band of brothers. Oh yeah. So, so we, we wanted to kind of, we wanted a sci-fi that was still pretty grounded in reality. Um, and making a Spartan costume is a little different than the ODSTs. You know, we can use some modern rigging like LBVs and stuff and hide things, but we just love ODST to be honest. Like that for some reason, all of us, across the board. I'd say we have one or two guys that are Spartan fanboys, but for the most part, 
we're all ODST fanboys to the heart. Love I it. love playing the game. Uh, my little brother and I, up until the latest installment, we would play every co-op game on Legendary when it came out. And ODST was one of my favorites. Yeah, it's definitely a fun one, that's for sure. And it's got a really great cast of characters. Very human, like like you mentioned as well, which is one of the things that made that stand out. Um, so like I mentioned before, there's a whole bunch of other fan films going on at the moment. Now, are you excited that there's a big, like, I guess, wave of ODST fan films coming along? Like, how do you feel about it? Uh, you know, it's 50-50 because it's like, oh, you know, we're all kind of making this at the same time. And it's a little... You know, what do we show? What do we not show? Um, are we pulling ideas from each other, X, Y, Z? But it, I think at the end of the day, it just goes to show that people people want more. The Halo community is there. And it's great that we're kind of just, we're going to do this. Like as fans, we're going to create the things that we want to create. And maybe if they get a lot of energy and views and whatnot, these bigger corporations that make these films like Paramount will be like, hey, um, maybe we need to do this as well there's a halo odst mega blocks movie that has almost three million views so the, mm. the fan the fans are out there you know um so it's it's obviously on one hand it's a little bit like oh no we're all working on the same thing at once and you're you're worried but at the same time we one are just sticking to paying attention to ourselves and making something we love and that we think fans will love but Two, it's great that there's so many people who want to see this happen and the fans are just making it happen. That's really good to see. There's a whole bunch of other ODST fans as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I feel robbed we never really got it. I know we got the book, but we never really got a second ODST game. Kind of feel yeah. robbed on that one. Um, okay, so what can you actually tell us about the plot without revealing too much of November Black? Yeah, so... Obviously, our lips are pretty tight right now while we still figure some stuff out. And like I said, there's other people making films, so we don't want to be uh, too open. But ours is before Reach, pre-Covenant, um, before humans really officially know about the Covenant. Um, there is a planet called Jericho that our film takes place, which fits in canon perfectly. And it's about a group of ODSTs, sort of like Alpha 9, how they get tasked out by Oni to do some pretty secretive stuff. And it's it's going to touch on the moral grays of fighting a an insurrectionist or a freedom fighter, depending on what side of the uh, fence you're on. And basically working for Oni as a hit squad. Mm -hmm. I like it. That sounds really cool. Did you purposely go out of your way to make sure that it fit within the larger lore? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we 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 dove deep. If you're a lore fan, there's going to be just tiny tidbits, like pay attention to names and things in the background. But it was really important to me that we found a place, you know, we don't need another timeline. We found a mm -hmm. place within canon that we can still have creative freedom but also live within canon and people who who enjoy lore and, and canon things can can get into the film too and and see something like hey that's that's a halo ce piece of armor or halo reach piece of armor or i know that name i know that name is someone from a book that i read you know 10 years ago uh that's incredibly important to us so yeah we we made sure that everything fit and it fit in a way that wasn't cheesy or kind of a mm -hmm. cop out you know um like a, you know, a cameo of the week type thing yeah sometimes people like can make things fit in a place but it's kind of a cop out like time traveling sometimes in movies and tv <laughs> shows you know yeah i'm with you on that one um do we have a, an expected or rough estimated release date um so our rough estimate is late fall we would we would like to get it done sooner than that but with the presidential stuff happening over here um we think it's probably best for our viewers and viewership and stuff to push it out late fall um maybe even early winter mm -hmm. but i also don't want to you know we're working on this film and it's just like it's just us it's out of our pocket so i don't want to give it too hard of a date but yeah late fall is what we're aiming for okay 
So that actually leads to the next question, you know, out of your own pocket and all that. So you guys are all paying for this yourselves. Like it's, you're putting up your own money to get it all together. Yeah, right now. So our plan is we are making a story driven trailer. We're filming next month uh, to put out. And then after that, we're going to create a Patreon and seek donations and stuff. But we wanted to put out a product with our own money to show that we're in this and what we're mm -hmm. capable of before we asked anyone for anything. Yep. Okay. So I was actually going to ask next, is there a way that people can help with this production? But I guess that's uh, um, on pause at the moment until you get this part together. Yeah, it's in the works. We're working on a Patreon and a GoFundMe and stuff. Um, but as soon as this trailer drops, we are going to push it out. Okay, fantastic. Well, we'll have the links to anyone that you want in the description and in the pinned comment and whatnot. So I guess what's next is just a few little fun questions just to wrap things up. So how did you get into Halo? Um, Halo CE. Yeah, from the get-go. I, I, I had a PlayStation. For some reason, we got an Xbox. I don't remember why we switched. And I think Halo CE came pre like you got it pre-installed or something on Xbox. And I started playing it, and I loved it. And uh, ever since then, I got in. I, you know, I've read a lot of the books. Played every game that they've made, uh, whether I liked one more than the other or not, I still played it. Mm, it'd be like that. Um, okay, then what's your favorite Halo game? Uh, well, ODST is probably my favorite. If I have to say, like, best of all, though, probably Halo Three. Uh, oh, man. But I love Halo Three ODST. I just yeah, my favorite. Do you have a favorite Halo character? Um. Hmm. That's a good question. Well, I don't want to say Buck. Um, I, people are going to hate me, but I actually really like Sarah Palmer. Really? Okay, that's a hot take. Uh, <laughs> why Sarah? Uh, I think her. I think her character is really cool and fun. I like her history, her lore, coming from an ODST team, um, and then moving up the ranks. And, uh, you know, everyone hates the comment to Master Chief, but for me, yeah, I was in the Army for seven years, and I'm like, that's exactly what I would say to somebody. Like, we we kind of talk on each other. So, like I said, I know a lot of people won't like it, but I like Sarah Palmer. Yeah, I think, um, like you said, it's her intro. Like, the very first thing she says to Master Chief kind of just instantly rubbed people the wrong way. Like, oh, how yeah. oh, dare yeah. you? thought you'd be taller <laughs> exactly but for me like for me coming from the military background and stuff i was like that's kind of funny you know she's she's not afraid to kind of quip at this large hero and and you know everyone looks up to him i, I thought it was kind of funny fair enough so i guess that means buck is your favorite odst character yeah i'm so i was a sergeant in the army and i always have a soft spot for uh for leaders for mm -hmm. like small unit leaders, guys that take care of their team and stuff. Yeah. Buck is one of my favorites as well. And he's actually my favorite ODST. Like whenever I played firefight with my friends and all that, I was always like, I'm Buck, I'm Buck, I'm Buck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I both. really liked him, man. Um, the voice acting of him as well. And, you know, he's kind of the cool guy, the whole group, you know, gets the girlfriend and all that. And I think he has a very underrated line in the whole franchise, right at the end of the game where he just like, Kyle sort of looks at the camera and says, one hell of a night. What can I say? It was a hell of a night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what, though? And I skipped over Sergeant Johnson's probably my all-time favorite. Okay, there's the redemption part right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All-time favorite is Sergeant Johnson. I loved, I loved his, his, his lines, just, just like a badass Marine. All right, well, what's your favorite Johnson line, then? Uh, I know what the ladies like. Oh, I know what the ladies like. Classic. Absolutely oh, classic. Know what the ladies, I mean, it's, yeah, it's perfect. For a brick, he flew pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually All was right. upset they didn't expand on that. Hey, before, <laughs> before we go, I wanted to show you guys building insurrectionists. So mm -hmm. we took most of the outer colonies were farmers and miners. Yep. So we are touching on some theft of Unicy equipment. But one of our Ooh. original items right here is a mining helmet switched to a combat helmet. 
Yep. And then that's fucking awesome. One of the things that rubbed me wrong on the thing we talked about earlier, someone's TV show, they had AK 47s from the 1950s. An I SUV an that my grandpa drive <laughs> from the future. <laughs> there we go. Now that's more like it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's incredible, man. Like the fact that it's, we've said this, like everyone says this type of stuff. You need fans to create these type of things because fans will look at stuff and go, no, that's wrong. That doesn't fit. That That's what are you doing? You know, so it's good to have that little attention to detail. But I think on that note, we'll call it here. November Black, get keen, everyone. It's going to be awesome. And I can't wait to see more from you. So thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. And I'm very excited to see this. And I know a lot of other people are as well. Awesome, man. It was really good talking to you and I appreciate you having us on.